Hey there guys, I think PC guy here and I will, as promised, do a small video about OC Scanner. Now, OC Scanner is a very interesting figure that has been uh, popping up in the past few months. Uh, it's quite useful and it helps with overclocking your graphics card easily. Now, it is baked in on MSI Afterburner, which I will be using. There is also a special AVGA um, tool for AVGA graphics cards, but, you know, it does basically the same. Uh, and the uh, Afterburner Edition is available to any brand of graphics cards, so whatever your brand is, you will be able to use it. Keeping in mind that it is only usable for cards of the 10 family, uh, let's call it the GTX 1080, 1070 and so on, or newer. So also the RTX and the GTX 1660 Ti, etc. family. For this video example, I'll be using a 1660 Ti. Uh, I will actually be doing a video comparing it to my 960, see, you know, benchmarks, scores, reviews, uh, game comparisons for real world scenarios, all that sort of thing. I will let you guys see and uh, let me know what you think of it, because it's actually my first try uh, being do, trying to do a more professional review, a more... Uh, detailed kind of thing like you usually see on bigger news outlets obviously i won't be able to do a lot of them because i don't have a lot of cards uh, to review to begin with but uh, it's more to see how i can do so let me know what you guys think of that when it's out and uh, in any case this is the 1660i as you can see uh, the core voltage and the power limit something to, that needs to be said is that the 1660i is uh, the power limit is locked. Uh, that means that it won't go over 100%. Although in that 100%, there is already a 10% headroom uh, from the default, from the uh, factory, over the, well, let's call it reference uh, board. Although there is no official reference board, it's ten, around 10% higher than the NVIDIA uh, board that comes into uh, the board partners uh, allows. So it already has some headroom in the overclocking, although it doesn't let you go any further than that headroom. To do that, you would need to flash a BIOS, which can be risky. Uh, if you don't know what you're doing, even if you know what you're doing, it can be risky. And uh, I would probably need to put it under water cooling to push it further than that limit anyway. So uh, we'll see what results we get under that limit. Uh, spoiler alert, we do get some nice results, uh, even if not groundbreaking. So uh, keep tuned to uh, you know see exactly how much in what situations. Uh, going back to the afterburner. As you can see, it literal, says literally one click overclocking, not as scary as it sounds. Why? Because uh, it does have built-in safety measures like the power limit that I just mentioned that keep you from frying your motherboard. Same for temperature. It has um, thermal thresholds that if, if uh, it goes beyond those thermal thresholds, if it gets too hot, it starts throttling down the frequency so it does not get any hotter. So, um, you know, it is quite safe worst case scenario you you'll have a, a black screen you have to reboot your pc and uh, you know it, it's not going to fry your gpu not in a way that you can for example fry a cpu if you overfeed it with voltage it's a bit safer than that thankfully how it works um there is a fan uh, frequency versus voltage curve that regulates the, gra the graphics card frequency in relation to the voltage it gets. Now, what it does, it, it will pick four different points on that curve. It will test them and overclock it. And, um, and it will basically pick one point, boost it up a little bit, test for stability. Boost it up a little bit, test for stability. The second it fails a stability test, it dials back to the previous uh, safe value and it will test another point. And that's uh, basically what it does over and over again until it is um, stable. After that, you'll be able to test it uh, and it will give you an optimism scale, let's say, that rates the stability of your clock. So uh, anything that is above like 80, 90, it's perfectly stable and uh, it should be fine. Although I still advise you to test it to Fermark, which I will do. One point that I might add, you have to unlock voltage control and voltage monitoring if you haven't already. Uh, and you have to set your voltage and power limit uh, all the way to the right to whatever your power limit is and to whatever your core voltage is. Again, that will not mean that the card will be drawing all that power. It will just mean that if it wants to, it will. Doesn't mean that it necessarily will be drawing it all the time. Uh, every time either so it's just uh, it will have the voltage available if it is necessary heading to afterburner as you are familiar with if you have seen some of my other videos of gpu overclocking 
we will just go here, make sure voltage control and voltage monitoring are enabled. They have to be, otherwise the program cannot make changes to those fields. And you want to make sure that the power limit and the core voltage are maxed out all the way there. Uh, the temperature limit, you can set the limit or not, but you can easily set it a bit higher than it is because 85 is still a very reasonable temperature to keep your graphics card. It's not dangerous for it. It's not going to burst up in flames or anything. And uh, it is a completely safe temperature for it to be. Now, uh, you shall. I would leave the fan on auto just to make sure that everything uh, is fine. And I would hit apply. Now, these limits, as I covered before, they are not going to go over the maximum amount that your uh, manufacturer has set to the graphics card BIOS. What all that this does is give your card the permission to, if it needs to, to get the extra power. On the other hand, as we already know, this card is uh, power limited quite heavily so I'm not sure it's going to draw a lot of power and I'm also not sure that we're going to see a lot of benefit from the OC scanner because the card is already factory overclocked a bit but we shall see uh, click here where it's next to the core clock on that little graph there it gives you this voltage curve uh, how much voltage from which frequency and so on uh, and click here where it says OC scanner it will pop up another little dialog thingy uh, I will put them side by side so you can actually see. Test is basically a stability test to make sure it's fine. Scan is what will actually do the overclocking for you. So let's hit scan. It will do a few tests and overclocks at different power. Well, like you saw in the explanation on the website, it will pick four points. It will scan, overclock, test it there until it's, uh, you know, the maximum it can and until it is stable, and then it will do the next point and so on. So I will leave this running and uh, I'll speed it up in case it takes too long. It should take roughly about five minutes, so uh, we will see. Now, as you can see, it gave us an uh, average overclock of 54 megahertz. This is, as you can see, only the core clock. That is not crazy. Like I said, the card is already factory overclocked and um, it is quite severely power limited by default by the factory so it's not crazy that it gives you this uh, thing and the overclock curve was automatically ex exported to MSI Afterburner as you can see here it is already set to curve now you can close this and call it a day or you can test it to make sure further to be further sure that the stability is what you want it to be. So as you can see as well, it only tests the core clock. It does not do anything about the memory clock. You probably will still have to do that manually. I will check that in a second after running a test, which I just click here and it will do the test on itself. Now the test is completed. As you can see, uh, this was the first that I did the actual complete test, 90% confidence level. So that's pretty reasonable, that's pretty good. Uh, it's only a small core overclock, but like I said, keep in mind, this card is already factory overclocked, so you cannot expect a lot more out of it. And as for the memory clock, I'm going to do it as well afterwards, I'm going to run the test again to make sure it's stable, as well as running uh, an actual uh, GPU stress test, like uh, Unigen superposition or something like that, or Fermark to actually make sure it is really stable and not just take after Brennan's word for it. When that is done, uh, I will show you guys the results, what was the clock, the, the memory clock that I achieved. And I will also show you like practical results in games as well as the benchmark scores for that in, for example, 3D Mark and such. Now, uh, I did what I said I was going to do and uh, I bumped the memory up to plus uh, 1100. Could possibly go further, but I just wanted to make a uh, kind of overall overclock so I would get on with the video, didn't want to lose too much time testing for stability, so this is where I landed, it's pretty decent, and it's probably close to the max that I can get anyway. As far as how much benefit you actually get from uh, this overclock, I ran a quick fire strike uh, test with 3D Mark. Uh, as you can see, graphics score 17, 705, and I had noted down here beforehand a score of 16, 865 for the non-overclock, just stock uh, version of my graphics card. So that is nearly a 1k graphics score increase, but uh, that's all nice and dandy, but how does it actually translate to real world value? Let's find out. As you can see, uh, we're testing this uh, performance in Witcher 3, just 
random game that I picked to try it, it doesn't really matter. And uh, as you can see, I set it all to default. Uh, clock zero, memory zero, core voltage zero, everything is at stock settings for this graphics card. And uh, as you can observe, as we are playing, we are encountering 64 FPS, 71 FPS, uh, I'll actually reset the counter so you guys can see. So 65 FPS ish with uh, 57 1% low. But what will happen when I actually turn on the overclock? Let us find out. So I have the profile saved here. Just hit apply. It's applied. As you can see there, it applied on top uh, on the mega on the frequency. Uh, actually, wrong button. Let us reset the counter. 68, 61, 60, 60, uh, 68 average FPS with a 62 low. So as you can see. It is somewhat of an increase, you can claw back a few FPS there. And it's worth remembering that these FPS that you are gaining by overclocking, you're gaining them essentially for free. You pay no extras, you pay no extras for being uh, the ability to overclock your um, graphics card. Even this one that the, is not is power limited, I cannot very easily overclock it further. Even it can be overclocked and can gain me a few FPS. And I could gain even more by lowering the settings. It's on ultra right now, obviously. But uh, it would be a possibility. So it's always possible to claw back a few FPS like that by, for example, turning down anti aliasing. And that's going to make a big difference in FPS, and you won't notice it much in the actual game visuals. So uh, there's that to keep in mind. It's always worth it to claw back those extra, extra frames when you can, especially for free. Now, uh, this was originally about o Overclock Scanner, that was the point of this video, it ended up being slightly a bit more than just that, but uh, anyway, uh, going back to the main point of this video, which is Overclock Scanner, is it worth using or not? Um, well, it does provide some overclocking, uh, it makes it easier, it was completely stable as you saw, there were no artifacts, no issues, uh, no crashes, so that much of overclock scanner is working as advertised and it's fine. However, it only overclocks the the memory clock. The, sorry, the core clock. It does not touch the memory clock. You still have to do that yourself. So while well, it, it kind of does half the job. So there's that. Uh, would I recommend using it? Yeah, I definitely would. Why? Because it's basically risk free. Uh, it gives people free performance from their already paid for graphics cards, so you're getting more value for your money, and uh, there's basically no downsides. So do I recommend it? Yeah, I definitely do recommend it. What do I, do I think it's the most effective way? No, manual overclocking uh, will still provide give you better results. Manual overclocking will give you more control, more fine tuning, so you can squeeze even perhaps more an extra frame or two there. But uh, this is a lot easier to use. OC scanner is easier to use, so that way I do um, approve of it. In this case, in particular, there was not a massive gain to be gained from overclocking because it's already factory overclocked. But even then, you could see that I gained quite a few frames on Witcher 3 example from the stock going to the actual uh, overclocked profile. So it is noticeable. Even a small overclock can make quite a big difference. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope it has been useful. Uh, next up, I will do a comparison similar to what I just did in Witcher. Uh, I will do a few games. Uh, I still have to decide exactly how many. I'll probably do the same that I did on the... 90, uh, 960 versus 1660 Ti review. I'll use the same games uh, and I will compare them between the 1660 stock and the 1660 Ti overclocked. So you guys can see how much of the difference it makes with overclocking your graphics card and getting that free performance that costs you nothing and again is mostly safe. So uh, that will be it. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, stay tuned for the next video. Like, subscribe, click the bell to get the notifications for the next video that comes out. Uh, share the message, uh, share the channel. Uh, Attic PC guy out.